Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, up here you can see uh, the heart's been removed. This would be uh, the brachiocephalic trunk coming off. Uh, and then the left common carotid, left subclavian. As we go down, we have the thoracic aorta above the diaphragm. Then we have the uh, abdominal aorta below the diaphragm. You see branches here. This is called the celiac trunk here. Uh, left gastric, uh, splenic, and hepatic arteries branch off here. Then we have the superior mesenteric going to a lot of the upper part of the GI tract. Inferior uh, mesenteric going to more of the uh, lower part of the uh, GI tract. Uh, the abdominal aorta then splits into the common iliacs, the internal iliac, and external iliac branch off of that. The external iliac will enter the thigh and become the femoral artery. As it goes by the knee, it's the popliteal artery, then it becomes the anterior and posterior tibial and uh, fibular. The anterior tibial artery will become the dorsalis pedis in the foot, and that's important because that is an um, important way of judging uh, the circulation to the lower part of the body, the, the lower limb. Uh, not shown here, though, branching off the uh, subclavians underneath the clavicles, we have the, uh, as we go through the shoulder region, we have the axillary artery, which then becomes the brachial artery, which then becomes the radial and ulnar arteries. Uh, the radial is a very important place for taking pulse. The brachial is an important place for taking uh, blood pressure. When we get to the hands, we have a lot of anastomoses. Coming back up, we have a lot of the same veins, but a lot of them are doubled. Uh, arteries tend to be deep in the body. Veins are deep or superficial. The deep veins, often you'll have two veins running with an artery of the same name, obviously in the opposite direction. Um, we also have some superficial uh, vessels, the basilic and the cephalic. Uh, the median um, cubital vein, very important for taking uh, at the elbow region, uh, is very important for taking um, blood for tests, etc. Uh, going to the brain, uh, the common carotids are going to branch into the external and internal carotids. The internal carotid will enter the brain and enter the uh, cerebral arterial circle. Also coming up, which I mentioned in another video, the vertebral arteries will go up the uh, transverse foramina joined to become the basilar artery and then again enter the cerebral arterial circle also known as the circle of Willis. Coming, the blood that's been through the brain will collect in the dural venous sinuses and leave through uh, eventually the internal jugular vein uh, and enter the subclavians uh, to become joined together to form the brachiocephalic vein. There's only one brachiocephalic artery called the brachiocephalic trunk. There are two brachiocephalic veins that empty into the superior vena cava. The vertebral veins do not drain the brain, they just drain the deep neck structures. Um, now the lower part of the body, coming up, we have the same sort of vessels we had for arteries, but we also have some superficial vessels, uh, small saphenous and the great saphenous. The great saphenous is very important because it's used a lot in bypass surgeries. Uh, it's superficial, so it also tends to form varicosities. Uh, it also runs in front of the medial malleolus, so it's a good place for prolonged IVs.